Well, now that I've done the National East and the National Central, it is now time for the National South, consisting of the Birmingham Hornets, the San Antonio Longhorns, the Atlanta Trojans, the Jacksonville Bucks, and the Tampa Tropics. So let's get this underway with the Tropics. Well, we get started with the team that had the longest losing streak in not only franchise and conference history, but PF8 history too. The Tampa Tropics. They start off 0-14. However, they did turn around in the end. They went 3-1 in their final games. So that was a pretty good finish. Although it probably cost them a chance to get the number one overall pick to the um, Saints. So here's how they did in terms of stats. They were 37th in points scored. That's terrible. They were 33rd in yards offense. But they were 20th in rushing yards. So that's pretty solid for them. But 34th in passing yards. So that's definitely not good. On defense, they were 31st in scoring defense. So... Not good at all. 26 in right means scoring means be off defense against the yards. 31st against the run and 19th against the pass. So they had a very good running, well not very good, but a solid running game and a solid pass defense. So man, this team has a lot of holes to fill. Their quarterback Joseph Sander was he threw for almost 3,700 yards, but he had a completion percentage of under 56 percent. So that's not good. 17 touchdowns and 16 picks. That's definitely not good, but compared to everyone else on the team, he's definitely the best one. But then you get to their running game, and oh boy, it's a whole different game. Their running back, Edward Robinson, had run, rushed for almost 400 times, almost not over 1,800 yards, but he only got 8 touchdowns though, so that was pretty disappointing, but he sure did get a lot of yards. They didn't have a 1,000-yard receiver either. Their leader was um, Carmelo Weiss, who had slightly under a a thousand yards but six touchdowns but unlike all the other teams their um, receivers were pretty even when it came to yards so instead of like having one or two leading the way they're pretty even so who knows what to say about that except maybe they have a solid um, depth at receiving core they have a solid offensive line but it does have a lot of holes in it too so they need to fix that not a single hundred tackle player so that's a little disappointing but they did have two very good um, sackers, which is Robin Hoskins, who has 19 sacks, so he's right up there with the most sacks in the season. And right behind him is James Auburn, his other defensive end with 11 sacks. But then when you get to defense, not only they only had eight picks this entire season. That's disaster. That's probably like the worst of anyone ever got this year. But Michael Drew, Drew their cornerback, did have four interceptions, so that's pretty good. So this defense does not really have a lot of good players on it. So that's really concerning. And same goes for the offense. So what are the highlights for this team? Well, they did go 3-1. And, and not only did they go 3-1, and one, those two of those victories were against teams with winning records. Kansas City and San Antonio. So that's pretty impressive. But there's really nothing else. They did stuck a good game when they hosted um, or Omaha, who would go on to be PFA champion. But there's pretty much nothing left after that. And of course you get to the lowlights. Well going 0-14 is of course disastrous. And of course some of those losses were terrible. I mean the first game when they were at um, Honolulu. They led 16-0 and they blew at 28-16. They had a close game with Boston they blew that. They had a um, close game with Atlanta they blew that. They had two close games with, um, no actually it was just one with Jacksonville. They blew that. And of course, overall finishing 3 and 15 definitely shows you did not have a good year. So, going into the 2017 season, so far it looks like the Tropics are probably the worst team on paper. They don't really have a lot of talent. Their stats are horrible. They went 3 and 15. They have the third overall pick. And I'm sure they're going to improve a little bit cuz 3 and 15 is like near the bottom as you can get, but I don't see how much they're going to improve next year. So I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens. Well, now we get to one of the most interesting teams in the offseason and probably one of the most lopsided teams so far this season. And that's the Jacksonville Bucks. What a terrible start they had the year. Starting off 0-3. They managed to like, turn around a little bit before they went on a four-game losing streak. But then they ended up going 3-3 free and free to their final games to finish 6-12. and 12. And I think they're the only team that went 6-12 and 12 this year. Now, oh boy, listen to this. On offense, 
They had the third best scoring offense in the league, scoring almost 26 points a game. They were eighth in yards, 15th in run running yards. So it's around average for that. They were the eighth best in pass offense. That's pretty damn good. So they had a very strong offense. But then look at this defense. They were dead last in points. They allowed the most points of everyone. So they scored the third most, but allowed the most too. Allowing almost 29 points a game. They were second to last in yards. They allowed over 400 yards a game. That's terrible. 36 in the, against the run and 35 against the pass. So they had a very, very strong offense, but a shitty defense that was so bad it harmed their offense, and that's what, why they're 6-12. and 12. Gee, it reminds me a lot of the Saints for the last couple years, don't it? Starting on offense with their quarterback, Michael Witters, who missed two games due to injury, he threw for almost 3,900 yards. He had 31 touchdowns, but he had 11 interceptions. That's a little problematic. But get this, he was sacked 11.1% of his dropbacks. So 1 in 10 times he was dropped back to pass, he was sacked. Maybe that's one reason why this team sucked. Maybe they had a terrible deep offensive line. But then we get to his backup, Tony Brom Gardner. Hard name to pronounce. In his two games, he threw for almost 500 yards, but he had oh, barely, not even 53% of his passes completed. Four touchdowns, three picks, and also had a sack rating of 9.3. So his backup didn't do good, he got injured, and they got sacked a lot, looks like. Running back Desmond Haggard, he missed one game due to injury, but he rushed for over 1,600 yards, but he only got nine touchdowns. And his backup running back, Wolf Wilson, he, in his one game start, he got over 400 yards in 18 games he played, but one start, but just four touchdowns. So this offense could get a lot of yards, like I said, but just couldn't get a lot of points off it, except probably in the touchdown ratio. Then we get to the receiving part of this team and it is excellent. Their leading receiver, Emil Galliott, had over 1,500 yards and 14 touchdowns that he had a great year. And right behind him, Michael Horn, he had over 1,200 yards and eight touchdowns. And their tight end, James Bennett, had over 500 yards and eight touchdowns too. So this receiving core was very, very strong. And yep, that offensive line struggled. They had some very good studs, but they also had a lot of duds too. So that offensive line needs a lot of fixing. So that looks like the main weakness so far for their offense. But now here's where it gets really strange on defense. They're, they have a they have three court players getting over 100 tackles. Richard Calabres, their linebacker, 127. Unbelievable. Their free safety, David Stock, 124. Again, incredible. And their strong safety, Ernest Gun I mean Gunnan, had 106 tackles. So some reason they got a lot of tackles, but they just couldn't stop this. I mean their defense. But now I see why too. They had very very few sacks. Their leader was Richard Calabres with nine sacks. And then on touch interceptions, while they got a whole bunch of interceptions, their leader was David Stock with six interceptions, and their cornerback Errol Good had five interceptions. But still, overall, not that many interceptions. So I guess that shows why their defense struggled last year. They didn't get a lot of pressure. And, of course, they did not get a lot of turnovers. And also, I think this is the only defense ever in PFA so far that allowed over 500 points. They allowed 515 points. Now, I don't know. Maybe there's another team coming up with the second worst defense that allowed that much. But right now, Jacksonville Bucks are the only team I know that allowed over 500 points. So, man, what are the highlights for this team? Well, that offense was very good. They did sweep Atlanta. That prevented them from going to the playoffs. They did beat Birmingham once. That was very good. But other than that, all their wins were mostly against Tampa, pretty much. And that's not really something to celebrate. And then, of course, that offense was very strong. But, of course, their weakness was that defense. That defense single-handedly ruined them have any chance to make it to the playoffs. If they even had just a... Not a strong offense. If they had just an average defense, this team could probably be 12 and 6, maybe like a complete reversal, and maybe they would be in the playoffs instead. This team overall in the draft needs to focus on that defense, and they need to focus on that offensive line if they want any shot to make the playoffs next year. And if they do that, if their defense just approves just a wee, wee little bit, 
this team could be a playoff contender next year and e probably maybe even easily make the playoffs. But they got to keep that offense going strong and they need to fix that defense. And if they fix that defense like they like Omaha's defense is, this team could easily be a PFA Bowl contender. Well, now we get to another interested team, the Atlanta Trojans. Now, going into the season, this was on paper the worst team on the field. They had one of the worst offenses, and they had the worst defense in the league and no, by a mile. But something incredible happened. They started 6-0 and with an incredible offense. But then they went to Minneapolis, and they got destroyed 27-10. However, they rebounded a little bit by going 8-2 and the next couple weeks. However, after that, they collapsed and only won one game to end the season including losing once to Louisville. What a disastrous ending that was to finish 9-9. Nine nine. But then again, I did thought they were going to be the worst team on paper. Well, they were. So going 9-9, nine and nine, that actually was probably pretty good for Atlanta. That's probably the best they could have done. On offense, they scored the 27th most points in the league. Now, at one point, particularly back when they were like 6-0, and oh, they were almost number one. They were right up there with Omaha. But after that, they completely collapsed the last bunch of weeks. They barely scored any points whatsoever. They were 24th in yards. One point, I think they were like number one as well. They were 30th in rushing yards, so that's not really good. And then they were 18th against on the pass, which is solid. I think they were around that pretty much the entire season. On defense, they were 16th in scoring. That's solid. 20th in yards. That's solid. They were dead sec I mean, second to last in rushing yards. They allowed almost 150 yards a game. Well, you're in a division that has, like, I think it was like f all four ru running backs in that cop division are very good. So, of course, that's not good. But they were second best de pass defense in the league, allowing under 191 yards a game on the in the air. So this is one strange defense that's supposedly be the worst in the league, but they overall, except that rushing off defense, they did a pretty good job. Their quarterback, Cody Perry, had a, almost 4,000 yards. However, he barely completed 57% of his passes, so that's definitely not good. He had 26 touchdowns and 16 interceptions. That's not good at all. And his backup, who started one game due to Cody getting injured, for 217 yards, he had a completion percentage of 64%. That's really good. Two touchdowns, no picks, and a QB rating of 118.3. So his backup did very, very good that one game he played. Their running back, Kenneth Dixon, rushed for over se almost 1,700 yards, and he had 10 touchdowns, so he had a very good year. And right behind him, <laughs> get this, Cody Perry is second most in rushing for over 114 yards. So, obviously, Kenneth Dixon was the only running back that did very good at all on this offense. But, hey, he had a good year. That running game was very good for them. They had a stud on wide receiver, Joseph Enams, who started every game, and he caught over 1,800 yards and 16 touchdowns. He was incredible. And right behind him was Christopher Eaton, who had over 1,100 yards and six touchdowns. And Kenneth Dixon also caught 600 yards and two touchdowns, so they have a dual threat running back here. So this passing game was very good for them. Their offensive line was, I'm not sure what to say. They didn't allow a lot of sacks, but they also didn't get many pancakes either. So I guess you'd say they're probably solid. On defense, just like Jacksonville, they had three 100 tackler players. Marco Lang, their running back, I mean linebacker, had 106 tackles. And Michael Gomez, their cornerback, and Larry Carter, their other cornerback, having 101 each. So that's very good. But on um, defense, they didn't really get a lot of pressure. Only 46 sacks in total. That's like around average. And William Phillips, their defensive tackle, led the team with uh, of 11 sacks. But on defense, oh my god. 10 interceptions in total. That is unbelievably bad with Michael Gomez getting the most with four interceptions. So they got a lot of tackles, but not a lot of sacks, and they certainly did not get enough interceptions. So the highlights. Well, one, starting 6-0 and and overall finishing 9-9 when you're considered the worst team in the league, that definitely is very good. They swept San Antonio, who is the heavy favorite to beat PFA Bulls contender in the, set, the National East. They beat Dallas. 
They beat Birmingham once, which who was the team that um, would eventually win the division. So they did. They beat Washington once too. So they did get some very big wins, but also at the same time, they finished after starting six and zero. They went three and nine the rest of their games, which is terrible. They lost to Louisville at, at home when they were down twenty four four four. I mean twenty four seven at one point before losing twenty four fourteen. I guess a Louisville team that only had one win at that point. So they did have a disappointing end to the year. But like I said, they were the worst team in the league. And they started 6-0, finished 9-9. That's still a very, very good season for them. So what can they do next year? I'm not actually sure. And I don't even know what's going to happen with the Trojans this year. I mean, they were the worst team on paper, yet they went 9-9. But the way they finished the year and their stats don't really show... That much they're going to get better. They might get a lot better on offense once everyone's healthy and shit, but I don't know. I'm not sure what to say if they'll go up or down. I guess we have to find out after the draft and then when we get into the season. Next up is the San Antonio Longhorns, who had a very disappointing season. I mean, on paper, this team had the number one offense with an overall of 79, but then when you got to defense, they were the most lopsided with an overall of 68, so... Although I thought they were going to do very good because of that offense, that defense was going to hold them back. And it kind of did somewhat. They start off 3-1, and one, then they lost 3 in a row. And then there was a point where they were almost at 500 for almost the entire year. But then the last week of the season, last four weeks, they went 3-1 and one to finish a disappointing 10-8. and eight. So at least they got a win season out of it. But man, that season was not very good whatsoever. On offense... They were 15th in scoring, so they scored under 23 points a game. They had the f they were fifth in yards, so they did get a shit ton of yards. They were fourth in run, I mean yards, and for rushing, that's very good. They were ninth in passing, so that's very good. So overall, on offense, they were pretty solid. Then we get to the defense, they were 17th in scoring, so that's pretty solid. They were 11th in yards allowed, that's very surprisingly good. They were 23rd against the run, so that's around solid, but not good. They were 13th best um, defense against the pass. That's pretty solid. So surprisingly, having the um, worst, one of the worst defenses on paper coming into the season, and they had a shit ton of injuries on defense this year too, they still overall had a really solid defense. So I don't know exactly what at all happened to San Antonio this year. Well, I do know one thing. They lost five games this year under a touchdown. If they won all those games, they could have been 15-3 and probably be in good contention to win the PFA Bowl. Now, for the first three picks in this year's draft, we had two quarterbacks taken. First, it was Kansas City taking Henry Settles, and then after Boston taking their linebacker, I can't remember his name, the San Antonio Longhorns took with their third overall pick, Glenn Cheng, who in his 18 games completed almost 66% of his passes. That's almost two-thirds. Threw for over 4,300 yards, 38 touchdowns, but he threw 15 interceptions. He most certainly had played a lot better than Settles this year, who I'm going to get to later when we get to Kansas City. Their running back, Elvis Smith, who only starred 15 games due to injury, had over 1,200 yards, but 8 touchdowns. And just like earlier with, I think it was Tampa, they had, they really, they did have good receivers, but it was more like spread out. Their leading receiver was Deion Garner who had almost 90 receptions, almost 1,350 yards, and 12 touchdowns. And right behind him was Scott Lopez, who had over 1,100 yards and 11 touchdowns. And, get this, their tight end, Charles Santigo, had over 122 receptions, but only nine, barely 900 yards, but he did get 9 touchdowns. So I wonder if he leads the league in receptions, which that would be quite surprising for a tight end that got that many receptions, but so few yards. They had a very strong um, offensive line, probably one of the best in the league. Their linebacker, Edward Gardner, had over 116 tackles, plus he got three sacks. Then on defense, I mean, in terms of sacks, John Rome, their um, defensive end, had 11 sacks. But then you get the interceptions again. They did not get that many interceptions. Looks like it's 12 total with Jason Watson, their cornerback, who only got to start seven games, I mean six games, getting four interceptions. So they did not get a lot of sacks. They didn't get a lot of turnovers, and they didn't get a lot of tackles that much either. So that might have been one major problem on their defense. 
So for the highlights, oh man, I don't know what to say. I mean, they did have a win season. That's good. They were very solid players throughout the um, team's roster, but man, they went ten and eight when they were. This team should have gone like fifteen three and something, and that's probably the low light because of their eight games. Like I said, five of them they did lose by um f a touchdown or less, including the Tampa in the second week of the season, who only had one win that, at that point. So that was very disastrous. And if they won all those games that they lost by close margins, they most cert not only would they be in the playoffs, but they probably would have gone all the way to PFA Bowl 1. So what can the Longhorns do next year? They got to fix up that de defense completely. They need to get better tacklers. They need to get fix that. Um, They need to get more sacks, and they need to get more turnovers. So they probably need to do a lot of work on that secondary. But overall, I'm not sure what San Antonio is going to do next year if they're going to get better or worse. We'll just have to wait and see. Well, now we get to the division winner, and that is the Birmingham Hornets. I predicted this team as one of the playoff I mean, wildcard teams for this year, and they did pull that through. But first, they started the year a t disastrous 3-4 and four because their defense was just so terrible. They couldn't get any points at all when they needed it. But their defense helped them stay competitive in most of those games. And they start off 3-4. and four. But then they went on to go 10-1 and one the rest of the, week, the season to go 13-5. As a matter of fact, going into 2017, they have the longest win streak right now active in the league with 7 wins. And, they and they've made it into the playoffs at the third seed. They beat the Denver Miners in a defensive struggle before going to the Washington Americans, who have the number one offense, just like um, Birmingham has the second best, and they got absolutely stopped 24-10. On offense, they were 29th in scoring. They, were, they didn't even score 20 points on average. That's pretty bad. They were the 38th in getting yards. They barely got 300 yards a game. They were 18th in rushing yards, so that's pretty solid, but they were second to last in passing. They averaged 183 yards a game uh, in the air. That's quite unbelievable for a playoff team that won 13 out of 18 games to have that shitty of a passing game. But then we get to defense. Oh, boy, it's an exactly different story. They were the second best defense in scoring, like I said earlier, allowing under 14 points a game. Matter of fact, they allowed over 20 points just three times. Matter of fact, they allowed under 10 points four times this year. That's quite incredible. They were third in yards, getting under slightly over 300 yards a game. They were 17th against the run, which is solid, although it's kind of disappointing considering how the rest of the defense played. But remember, their division, they had to play against eight, their opponents in their division eight times in total. All of them had very good running backs, so being 17th against that incredible running backs they had to play against, that's not that bad. And they were 4th against the pass, so that's very, very strong. Then we get to their stats, and this is not really good starting with the quarterbacks. Marcus Thompson, I mean Marcos Thompson, who was their third overall pick in this year's draft. He played on 16 games, he missed 2 because of injury, and matter of fact, he missed the rest of the playoffs because of that torn quad. He threw under 2,400 yards. He completed barely 55% of his passes. 16 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. So he didn't throw a lot of touch interceptions, but he did throw a lot of touchdowns. That's really bad. And his backup, Robert Mesa, had played 2 games. He threw under 200 yards. I mean, threw under not 1,000 yards, I mean. But he completed almost 65% of his passes. But he threw just 4 touchdowns. And two interceptions, so he didn't really do that much better either. So this team really needs to get to work on that quarterback position. Their running back guy Metz had over 364 runs this year. And he had almost 1,700 yards and 13 touchdowns. That is an incredible season he had. Well, then we get to that receiving core. And their leading receiver was David Travis who had 84 receptions, not even 1,000 yards, and four touchdowns. That's definitely not good. And right behind him, oh boy, Harvey Lewis, who had almost 800 yards, and that was with three more receptions and just two touchdowns. Jesus, that's just incredible how bad that receiving core and that quarterback position is. Only Guy Metz pretty much led that team at all on offense this year. 
They had a very strong offensive line. Linebacker Christopher Vela had over 127 tackles. And right behind him, their other linebacker, Xavier Lambert, had 100 tackles. So they had two good seasons. They were right up there in terms of sacks. And their defensive end, Orville Cope, and their defensive tackle, Robert Johnston, both had 12 sacks. But then, oh boy, we get to turn the interceptions. This team had the third most interceptions in the entire season. They had 20. And third most with their leader, Jacob Taylor, who was their number one pick in the draft, having six picks. That is absolutely incredible. They had, I think, looks like eight different players that got an interception. What an incredible season that secondary had. The highlights with that incredible defense, that seven-game win streak to end the year, beating Denver to that very high-flying offense to help hold them down to just nine points. That was very impressive. But that three and four start really hurt them. That offense really, really hurt them, especially against Washington. And man, three of those losses were within a touchdown or less. If they just won all three of them, they would be 16-2, and two, and they could have easily won PFA Bowl. So this team needs to fix the offense. they got to get a new quarterback if the, those two guys can't get healthy and start getting a lot of points on the board. they got to get more receivers, but better receivers. But other than that, don't see anything else that needs to be fixed. And if they fix just that a little bit, fix that offense, just like if Jacksonville fixed, fixed their defense... This team could be a major threat, not only in the um, National South, but in the playoffs in total. This team could go all the way to the PFA Bowl. If it wasn't for Washington and Omaha being the way, I think this could have been easily the team to beat in the um, National Conference and gone all the way to PFA Bowl 1. They could have easily beaten Chicago with that defense. Okay, that is it for the National South. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the final division in the National Conference, the National West. So until then, see you then. And this video was done on my new headset that I'm still testing out to make sure to get the sound all right. So hopefully I'll get better at it in the next episode.